truck stopped, so it's very nice. Okay. Yes, everything is perfect. I feel quite comfortable. Because of the people who are surrounding me. Yeah. Well, it's just uh, fine people and I know they will take care of me when needed. So it's a very uh, nice feeling to have that. Uh, of course, I'm a little bit afraid of uh, the consequences, but I think that's just normal. But uh, I think it's a good cause because the people have to wake up. So I feel uh, for myself personally, I have to do uh, uh, the most I can do. And I feel the time is right to do the most I can do. Do, do you like to be a good example for your son in that way? Of course, for my daughter as well. Uh -huh. But would you not be afraid about when they will do such actions? Then I will support them. So uh, we are here at uh, the airport of Pierce, uh, near Liège. We are here doing a blockade, a direct action, so people lock themselves in lockons, so uh, the police can take them away easily. We're here to block uh, the cargo transport, uh, because uh, we want actually to prevent as much as possible that planes uh, go up in the air now to uh, transport food, for instance, which we think should be localized. Uh, food production can perfectly be done uh, on a local scale. We think it's completely stupid, that a lot of money is wasted. Uh, to get food everywhere on the world, uh, why people should produce for their own communities, both here and in the global south. And if we then see that like uh, boat food production transport is completely unsustainable, and also economically this airport needs a lot of subsidies to, uh, to remain in business from the government. And the government would do uh, way better to uh, use this money instead of for this airport, for uh, local food production, for uh, research, for sustainable transport, sustainable energy, which also could create much more sustainable jobs. Because the only jobs that are created here are like uh, temporary jobs, jobs which are dependent from international companies that one day or another, when the subsidies go away, could also go away to other countries, which uh, lower wages, for instance. Of course, th there, you can't grow all food here, but like a lot of things, like um, beans, a lot of beans also transported here from Kenya and you can perfectly grow beans here. So it is, it's not that you can't have any flights, but even then we should have tried to work to more, towards more uh, sustainable transport because there are more sustainable options. For instance, in big uh, cargo boats it would be more sustainable than by airplane. But a lot of things that we do transport shouldn't be transported. So we should stop um, transporting the things that we can produce ourselves produce them here locally which is much more sustainable and then the things we still need we should transport in the most sustainable way which is certainly not by airplane <laughs> The idea I think is double on, on, on the one way, you really want to say, okay first this is so important, the, there is a climate crisis, there is a biological crisis and governments are talking a lot, they were talking in Copenhagen, they are talking in other places, but they're, what they do is, does not um, 
does not fit to what they say. So actually they do much to less or do nothing except for talking. So we say we really need to take action. And the only way, and it's, it's sad that it, it's like th that it is like this, but the only way that people will react is when they feel it in their wallets, when they feel it economically. So now by blockading here and stop this, this economy for a moment, we want to, to really make them think again about what could be the consequences. We don't want to be just passive consumers, we want to take action ourselves. And on the second hand, by doing this action, we also hope to achieve some uh, media attention and make more people aware of this problem. And like say, people, okay, if the governments don't do it, we need to pressure them, we need to do it ourselves and take action for system change. Because in this system, we won't stop climate change. Yeah. I say climate, you say justice, climate, justice, climate, justice, climate, justice. I feel pretty fine because we just did what we want to do, uh, so it was in the beginning a little bit stressful, but I'm feeling very okay. So uh -huh. also, I think the rest of the people are feeling pretty good. Uh -huh. so. uh, why you were stressful? What you was afraid about? Um, because we, we probably would not be able to do our block. That was the main uh, thing that I think everybody fears, like, can we do it? Is it possible? So we just done it. Our government is not doing anything about uh, the climate change. Us as people have to do it. So and the consequences, I, I don't really afraid of it. For me, this is, is really the thing I want to do, because it's necessary. I will achieve that uh, we can stay here as long as possible, and also that the media attention is uh, very positive and that we can bring out our uh, statement about uh, why we are doing this, and um, that's the main thing. So positive um, views in the media, and also that it, it's for other people that when they get mention of this action, they also kind of think about really the climate change is something we is a big problem, not for one, not for two, but for all of us in the whole world. Today our food system is completely ridiculous if you look to it on a global scale. Because indeed we, we eat a lot of meat here. Me personally I'm a vegetarian, but I don't expect everyone to become a vegetarian. But we do eat ver uh, a lot of meat, we do eat much, way too much meat. And that's a problem because uh, for, to produce this meat we need like also food for the cattle, uh, for the animals. And all this food for the animals almost comes from the global south, like from Latin America, like from Asia, Africa. And then the people who work there, uh, they don't own this own ground anymore. So they work there for a big company that produces food for our animals. So they produce food so we could have meat and they can't eat themselves anymore. And on the other hand, then we see, uh, well, globally it is recognized that food is a right. And then they say, well, it's enough if we have food security. So if there is somewhere a plague or whatever, we will bring them food and then they can eat. And then this highly subsidized food, because we have too much food here, is going there. And it's just destroying what is left of the farmers. Because they can't uh, go in competition with the cheap food, which is subsidized here. So we're doing two things. We're getting food for our animals to get meat from them. Are we bringing them back food, which is heavily subsidized, uh, which makes that the local farmers are being destroyed and are also losing down the land. They have to sell it towards these big companies who produce for our cattle. So it's two ways, working in two ways.